For the sake of my sanity, we are keeping Kuro at stage one and two. I am not showing her final ascension. Uh, I like Dangerous Beast, not on a child. She is way too close in age to my students. And she's literally the reason I did not show my friend President Ilya because I showed him Oath Under Snow and that was like phenomenal for a faith uh, story. And then I can't show him like what happens after and like what eventually happens with that timeline specifically because of this character because again she's too close in age to my students and i really really don't want to think about what they do outside of school let me keep my work life and my personal personal life separate please thank you and i really <laughs> She's voiced by top of most voice actress, and it's so sad. I can't like this character, like fundamentally, like she's sexually harassing like little girls. Like what the? F oh, President Ilya is a wild, wild thing. The clips are funny, but I can't seriously watch it. Uh, all right, base attack. It's high for a four star, but not for an Avenger usually. I know I'm sorry for the very quick transition, but I want to get this out and start streaming. For, a, for an Avenger, usually they are at the top of their class in terms of attack. And they have a they have a positive mod modifier. That's why Jolter hit so goddamn hard, like out like over other classes, because she already has a positive modifier for her damage. Like by default. So her having the highest attack and having a hot, like a damage modifier that actually helps her big thing chloe not nearly as uh noticeable but she does still have that modifier does bring her up over say salter who has like 10.6k attack i think uh chloe would technically be doing more damage than her like base stats alone but obviously not if you're fighting lancers hp very anemic this is like one of the lowest hps i've actually seen holy crap uh especially on a four star like this is low like Kuro is in and out that's her whole game plan half the time in plan half the time sorry star weight star gen normal adventure numbers don't worry about it you either flood the steer Oh, sorry. You either flood the field with stars, or she's like, or you brute force far away onto an Avenger. She kind of doesn't have either. It like she's, if she wants to do damage, she's hitting these quick. So and a quick chain that does give you a lot of stars, regardless of what your star gen is. MP charge 0.71 percent. It's good that she has that for these quick cards because that will help her gains tremendously because she only has the one heart scarred and three hits on the buster five hit extra attack in terms of uh mp gen and extra attack would do really well star gen not so much unless it's a quick chain uh but if you're doing a mighty chain it wouldn't be that bad you should get about 20 25 stars uh if i had to take a guess maybe a little less though Pro probably sitting around 20 stars so not that much but upstairs not that bad pretty solid kit upstairs skills okay so this is where a lot of her gameplay comes from so by default 20 percent attack 20 percent crit damage for the entire party Gives everyone an on attack activate buff for five attacks, five turns. Keep in mind, five attacks, that includes the MP. Every single enemy you hit is considered one attack. It doesn't use up three stacks, it uses one. You get this buff, manuscript completion for five turns when you do it. So you don't have to pop this immediately in a stalled out situation you do not have to get rid of these stacks immediately you can save it up use it when you need the thick thick battery because it doesn't cap out at 50 percent. it doesn't 
you can realistically get this to 15 stacks but that like that good luck looping your mp like that good luck spamming your mp five times like that because it you're gonna have to stagger your arts buffs your mp gain buffs you're gonna have to stagger everything if you want to mp that much to be able to get the thick thick battery on this it's pretty much impractical and more likely than not you're gonna be setting at 60 to uh like i said before 90 percent depending on how you card and when you're actually getting the battery it also give like chloe having these stacks also improves her mp damage so again you don't want to be popping these stacks like immediately for the battery if you plan on doing damage with chloe you're gonna want to mp first then do that then pop the battery and get her out of there uh but that's like optimal chloe usage and most people are not gonna play her optimally they're gonna use her as a support which to be honest that really is like her strongest role for what she enables like how much more damage like certain units pump out like kukuklin uh kukuklin i never can pronounce that name right her damage type neutral was ridiculous on a 50% buster CE because of how much she was double stacking. Like the, the value, the pure values and like the different buffs she was double stacking. Now you throw in like black rail and now her damage is actually really, really stupid. I know I'm talking about this like here, like the battery, but we'll, uh, it's only because it mentions it here. There is one more part to this skill that probably is gonna go unused by a lot of people if you're not using Chloe as main DPS. Every time you attack with quick guards, including her MP, she gets crit damage, which very, very nice. Like that is so solid for someone with a triple quick deck. They are going to be critting naturally and using the MP will get them more crit damage. If she is by herself, she has like full ramp up for this. Like she is going to get 100% crit damage uh, at one point. Wait, right? No, no, no. Uh, I mean, yeah, because of this, but not like she's not going to go 100% just from this, but like her entire kit, there is a chance she gets 100% crit damage for like one attack, like one last crit. So solid that she does have crit ramp up and it doesn't disappear once this goes away. It lasts for three turns. So if you need to. So again, it works if she's on a team or by herself, but obviously if she's by herself, she gets full ramp up on this. Uh, and if you pair her with Ruler Scotty, like an extra 100% crit damage on Ruler Scotty is uh, already impressive. Quick, quick, yeah, quick crit damage buffs. Second skill is what gives her the Miss Crane status. Guts to one ally, and then she yeets herself to the back of the party at the end of the turn. Why this is better than Miss Crane is that Miss Crane requires the enemy to still be alive for her to swap out. You need to be able to pop her MP. If all the enemies are dead, you cannot pop MPs. Thus, why you do not see Miss Crane in farming. It really is the whole reason why certain units are pigeon held to 50% CEs over using Black Rail. Because Miss Crane, while she would be a very good option for like enabling uh, this stuff, like in bitch comps, like you can literally give someone a 30% battery. No, 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 it wouldn't even be 30%, uh, 30%, it would be 35 because it's coming in after the other MP pair that with Oberon and you would have had it wouldn't have mattered if the servant had like a battery or not it actually wouldn't have mattered because two bitches one Miss Crane and then Oberon you have all the battery you need just from there you could have started someone with a K-scope and gotten a full Oberon loop regardless if they had charge or not so Chloe doing this on a skill is infinitely better than Miss Crane for farming, not necessarily for boss fights. 
Because Chloe doesn't provide nearly as much buffs as Miss Crane. She doesn't. She provides comparable buffs, yes, but nowhere near as like you pop Miss Crane buff, that servant is popping off for a while, regardless of their card type. But this does allow you to cycle more units. It's why you're why uh black rail is even an option for a lot of servants now like we like habitrot we like rash we like chang gong chloe's up there with them because she, simply because she rotates the party you get more buffs in for your dps third skill this is where the battery comes in but don't worry you do not need to level this skill for the battery the 10% is static. The only reason you are leveling this skill is for the MP damage and for the cooldown. That is it. Meaning you do not need to level Chloe at all if you plan on her just being a support. Is it very smart to level her first and third skill? Absolutely, that's more damage. But keep in mind like what, how much you're changing. It's 10% to 20%. Yes, that's doubling the, the buff, but like think about how many, what kind of buffs you're like double stacking in bitch setups or how much uh, buffs you're getting from like other setups, like especially Castoria setups when you're popping uh, MPs, you're getting like 100% attack just from the Castorias at base. If you have uh, higher cop, like higher copies like MP2 through five, like you're getting even more attack. A difference of 10% is like nothing. Like it's not gonna matter that much in like damage calcs when you're going from 200% attack up to 210. Yes, it's a difference, but it's not a significant difference. So Chloe, as long as you ascend her, she is going to function pretty much the same. Obviously this MP damage buff when you're pairing her with Oberon is gonna be a lot nicer if you level it. It will go from do it from rank one to rank 10 or rank 10 to double rank 10. But it really depends on your resources, number one, and like your team comp, whether you even need that much more damage. Because this is still more damage than you had before. This is still way more damage than you had before without using her. Passive skills, Avenger C, increased MP gen when she's taking attacks, 16%. And she debuffs the party's uh, debuff resistance by six. This does trigger Karen's buffs. So like, her, like whether you're using Black Rill or not, as long as Chloe is in a Karen comp, Clo uh, Karen is getting extra attack. If you want to like put Black Rail on Karen, Chloe just makes it better because you can put even more supports on the field. Yeah, he's nice. And like, and like, and you know, like Karen kind of does like want more charge than like other units. Uh, yeah, it, like it's just helpful that this is like that's something Karen always has in synergy with Avengers. Oblivion Correction B for more crit damage, eight percent. Self replenishment magic B charges gauge by three point five percent every turn, and independent action B minus. 7.8% crit damage. Why, 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 why is that important? Why is the 7.8 important? Oh my God. All right, append skills. Uh, For Kuro kind of doesn't matter. Like if you want her to be like a solo-ish unit, someone that's kind of by themselves or someone that is going for extra attacks, getting extra attack upgrade would be nice. At this point, I'm just going to recommend mana loading by default because they seem to just give every servant a battery these days. So her not having mana loading is going to screw her up later down the line. But I really, I don't think it's going to work the same with her. I do think she probably will eventually get like a front battery at some point, probably on this skill. I wouldn't, I don't think it's going to be targetable. I think it's just going to be for her and she just goes to the back line. 
but uh, yeah, like it's that they have been proving. I have gotten screwed over because they took a long time to give certain certain servants batteries. So uh, I don't know how what I'm doing for Karna or Raiko because they have extra attack instead of mana loading. I don't know if I'm going for another copy of either of them or if I just have to bomb grail them to fix that. It's going to be miserable if I actually do have to bomb grail them. Like at a certain point, I actually would rather get another copy than bomb grail for how long that's going to fucking take. MP. Nine hit single target. Quick. Damage to one enemy. And deals extra damage if... Sorry. Deals extra damage depending on the manuscript stacks. So if you manage to rack up 10, because that is possible, it's just not easy. Wait, is this on her, for herself or... Wait. Wait, I'm like I'm just trying to remember. Uh it was actually I'm pretty sure it's like only the ones on herself that she gets these for. Like th that count for her bonus damage. I don't think it's for the party. Uh yeah, I'm like 90% sure it's only the ones on herself. If it is for the party, cool. Like pairing her with an AoE is even better. Her overcharge is quick up. 10% base. It goes up to 30, but it lasts for three turns, which is nice because a lot of uh like Vargas, she doesn't have ramp up. Chloe actually does have ramp up. On CE. Chloe does 30% more MP damage. And here is also something that people mis mis uh, mistakenly said when she first came out that she would give a basically 30% battery to like every servant when they came out. No, that is not what this does. It gives you a 10% battery per unit when she comes out. So 10 for herself and then 10 for the other two. But just because I'm saying only 10 does not mean that's not important. That 10% is literally exactly what Buster Servants needed in order to be able to Black Rail loop. They just needed the 10% for servants like uh, Lartoria. I'm pretty sure she only needed the 10% to start before she could do Black Rail looping to begin with. So Chloe coming out, even without this bond like with this bond ce is game changing for lartoria now she can touch black rail when she has that ridiculously powerful mana burst it might be a mana burst that's one turn but it, that is still if she hits both niches she is absolutely nuking someone so is chloe especially knowing what that she is a dangerous piece in final ascension is she someone that you should be rolling for yes because just like oberon she does not care about card types he will improve your account regardless he literally changed the buster farming quick farming and arts farming meta simply by existing and affecting aoe servants the way she does being able to get another unit that can give ridiculously high batteries like oberon that's a four star is great now here is the big 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 caveat with using chloe your party cost is going to be ridiculously high if you're using uh, double Vich over on Chloe and a five star DPS. That is five units already. That is 48 cost from your units besides Chloe, and then add Chloe for another 12. That's 60. You have four, five CEs and one more servant to put on that team. 
if you are trying to do this in a lottery, good luck. Mash is married to your party, the entire lotto. And I hope you're still able to succeed, comps. Right? No, at that point, you're still not able to. You're off by, like, just a little bit. You're not able to do 6 CE. Not with a not with uh, a five star DPS. You, you're gonna have to downgrade. And even then, I still think party cost is gonna be an issue. If you care a lot about bond point farming, you're probably not gonna use her with Buster farming. You're more likely going to use her with uh, arts farming. Yeah, more likely with arts or quick farming. And if you want to use double Chloe, that is a, and an option. Uh, sorry, double Chloe is the legit option for farming. Or like, it just depends on how much damage your DPS is actually doing. Because if it's a MP1 five star DPS, your damage actually might not be enough unless you're using Black Rail. You're, you can't, you're not going to be able to skirt if you're not doing like double Castoria double bitch double scotty and using double chloe instead you're trading your card buff for attack and mp damage later you get your card buffs later if at all or you're only getting one card buff he is the servant you have to play around with to see how you can work her with your own account he is not going to be a uh fix all solution She's not going to be someone that uh, like you're going to be using all the time. She's someone that is just going to help you do stuff that you are already able, able to do, just like with less margin for error. That, yeah, that, that I'd say is her best role, fixing margins of error. Because Quick has those so often, you are like just under being able to loot. And Chloe being able to choose when you get her battery and then when you get your next buffer, whether that's turn two to like swap someone else out and bring someone else in or sorry, turn two where you're getting the, like the 30 to 40 and then getting Chloe out for the final wave, probably Oberon. Yeah. I don't know why I really held off on Chloe for the last one like i really think it's just because she is the most meta changing one castoria uh melison they are good we're probably gonna get more units like them in the future more likely than that chloe we are not likely to get a unit that does this at a, as a four star both her and sith have five star kits if they were five stars i wouldn't have bad in an eye because their kits are that good it is really a steal that we're getting them as four stars because it makes the party cost less all right i will see you guys in the next one peace thank you for making it to the end of this video if you enjoyed drop a like or sub Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.